Okay, so the last example was uh, was a 1D case with finite difference methods. Uh, and so this one is going to be a 3D case. I'm going to skip 2D and go straight to 3D uh, because most real life applications are going to be in 3D. So uh, it, it's a nice thing to investigate uh, how the, the heat equation behaves uh, in 3D when you use finite difference approximations. So 3D, 3D finite difference uh, example. Uh, and so basically the principle uh, is going to be the same as in, in 1D. Uh, the main thing that's going to change with 3D is the type of positional uh, derivative that we use. So if I write the 1D equation, we had the partial of t with respect to time uh, equals the thermal diffusivity constant, so k times, uh, times the second derivative of the temperature with respect to x. But for a 3D case, we need to use a sort of three-dimensional second derivative. Uh, and so that's called uh, the del square or the Laplacian operator. Uh, and so we apply that to t and we get our 3D heat equation. Uh, you can also have a term for internal heat generation, but we're not going to be dealing with that for this example. Uh, we will only deal with this uh, on the right hand side. So this del square operator, it's basically just a, sort of a three-dimensional equivalent uh, of of a second derivative. Uh, so if I write this, if I expand this out in terms of second derivatives, I would get something like uh, d second t dx square plus d second t dy square plus d second t uh, dz square. Uh, and so that, that's basically all there is to uh, this del square operator uh, in terms of the heat equation. So when we apply this uh, in finite difference form, oh sorry, that's not a second derivative there. So when we apply this in finite difference form, uh, we, we do exactly the same steps that we did uh, with the 1D case. So for, for example, this uh, term over here, we discretize it, we turn it into that sort of difference uh, form instead of a derivative form. Uh, so we, we use uh, first principles and turn this into a finite difference uh, sort of discrete version. For these three terms, we, we do the same thing. Uh, so for each of these three positional derivatives, we discretize them just like we did uh, with the x variable in, in the last example. Uh, and so we do it with all of these and then just add it together. So it's a, the exact same procedure, more or less the exact same formula. Uh, and all you do is just discretize uh, the second derivative with respect to all three variables. And then you sum together those discretized uh, equations. And that's how you get a finite difference form of the 3D heat equation. So so that's basically an overview of how uh, 1D compares to, uh, to 3D uh, in terms of discretizing the heat equation. Uh, another thing that's going to change besides the equation is the lattice that we use. So obviously for a 3D case, we need to use a 3D lattice. So if I draw a, for, uh, a simple 3 by 3 by 3 uh, 3D lattice, it would look something like this. Uh, the art's not really great, but it would basically look like a 3x3x3 three by three by three cube uh, where you have points uh, dispersed throughout. Uh, and so basically, you would have your, your z direction, uh, your x direction, and then your y direction. Uh, and, and so uh, an important thing that would change with a lattice like this as compared to a 1D lattice uh, is the number of uh, neighbors that a given point has. So in a 1D lattice, if I pick this point, for example, it only has two neighbors, one on each side. But in a 3D lattice, if I pick this point, for example, it has a neighbor here, one here, uh, one here, and a bunch more, uh, depending on which, which point you pick. And so in a 3D lattice, each point has more neighbors, uh, and it has neighbors in all three directions. And so that's why you need this del square operator instead of just a simple one-dimensional uh, second derivative. So, so that's basically an overview of how the lattice works uh, and, and how the equation works. Uh, now on to boundary conditions. So for a 1D case, the boundary conditions are quite simple. So if I go back to this, uh, the boundaries are just the two edges or so the two endpoints of that line. 
Uh, but for a 3D case, it's kind of more complicated because the boundary conditions are the edges of the block. So they're planes. So for example, this plane at the top over here is a boundary of the block. Uh, and so I would have to assign a boundary condition to it. Uh, and the same, same goes for all other edges, all other planes. Uh, and so the boundary conditions that we're going to be using in this example are all uh, Dirichlet boundary conditions. So they're all prescribed temperature boundary conditions. Uh, but you can still apply prescribed heat flux uh, boundary conditions, so like Neumann conditions uh, or, or other types of conditions depending on your, your uh, specific application. Uh, I said this before, but we're not going to be dealing with uh, internal heat generation in this video. Uh, we're only going to be dealing with a case where you have no internal heat generation and only this on the right hand side. So obviously there's going to be a lot of data points and a lot of calculations to do uh, and we don't want to do them by hand so we're going to use MATLAB again. So I've written a script uh, in MATLAB uh, and so between these two green lines there's all the parameters you can change uh, and so f equals weight bar that's just telling us uh, how far the simulation has progressed so it's going to be a, a small little um, weight bar uh, that's that's going to show us how far we are uh, in terms of how much time is left uh, in the simulation. T total is, is the total time that we're that we're going to be simulating up to and I've said that uh, I've set that to 10 seconds. Delta T is the time spacing so we do calculations for every 0 0.01 seconds. Uh, lattice spacing is the, dif uh, the, the distance between uh, points on the lattice. So in this example, it's going to be the same distance in all three directions, uh, and that's going to be 0 0.0001 uh, meters. K is the thermal diffusivity. Q, uh, C, and rho, which I've written as P. Uh, all, all of these variables are concerned uh, with the internal heat generation term, so we don't really bother with those right now. Initial temperature is set to 40 uh, Celsius. Boundary X, boundary Y, and boundary Z are the the boundary temperatures because uh, it's a Dirichlet-like uh, condition on every boundary. So I've set all the so I've set all the temperatures to 20 Celsius uh, at the edges, and so basically this block is going to uh, cool down from 40 Celsius down to 20 Celsius. Uh, plot height is is set to 70, and what plot height is is uh, if I go back uh, and draw a cube or a block. Uh, for example, for some applications, it's convenient uh, to, to only plot one slice of this block. So what I mean is, for example, I only want to see the heat uh, changes or the, the temperature changes uh, along this plane or this slice, for example. And if this slice is, for example, five, uh, five units above the bottom, then I would set this to five. Uh, in this case, I've set it to 70 because I want it to be 70 units from the bottom. Uh, and so you can see the heat distribution at different uh, different slices along the z-axis. Uh, and if you want, you can also plot the entire block, but uh, in this case, I'm only doing one slice at a time. So I'll, I'll plot one slice at a given height uh, and study that slice in detail. Uh, and then if I want to look at another slice, I can change the plot height uh, and look at another slice along the z-axis. But it's it's very, very simple to plot the entire block if that's uh, desired for some applications. So if I go back to the simulation and if I just run it, uh, you can see the weight bar there and you can see uh, this plot being formed. And you can see that uh, the edges are cooling down towards 20 Celsius uh, and the center of the block remains uh, at this sort of reddish color because it's still at 40 Celsius. It hasn't fully cooled down yet. Uh, and you can see that the region that's at 40 Celsius is slowly shrinking uh, as the edges cool down towards the outside uh, temperature, so towards 20 Celsius. Uh, the height uh, in the surface corresponds to how hot something is. So you can see the z-axis is just the temperature. Uh, and also if something is blue or towards blue, uh, it's more cold. And if it's towards the red uh, end of the spectrum, uh, then it's, it's hotter uh, in temperature. So uh, the color spectrum can also indicate uh, the temperature in a MATLAB plot. Uh, and so basically you can see this uh, simulation progressing and everything is slowly uh, getting colder and colder. It, it won't reach uh, 20 Celsius, it won't reach thermal equilibrium uh, within the 10 second time frame probably, uh, but eventually it would uh, reach, reach thermal equilibrium with the boundaries or with the outside uh, environment. 
So you can see the progress bar, it's slowly progressing. Uh, it's indicating how far the simulation has progressed. Uh, and if I pause this for a second and go back to the plot, uh, you can also rotate it around uh, and, and look at it from different angles. And if you look at it from the bottom, for example, uh, you can see that surface. And if you look at it from the top, uh, you can see sort of, uh, sort of this heat distribution along the edges, which is colder. Uh, and also getting warmer as you go uh, towards the center of that of that slice or of that sheet uh, at at height equals seventy, and you can see that the redder regions uh, are hotter and they're at the center, and the blue uh, regions are colder, and so they're at the edges because the edges are uh, cooling down faster uh, since they're uh, in contact with the environment or they're closer to the environment, so they're going to lose heat faster to the uh, outside environment. So I'll quit that simulation. Uh, you can also change these parameters around. So for example, if I were to set, uh, set these to something higher than 40, so if I set this to, for example, 60, uh, and if I run the program, uh, you can see that now the temperature is rising. Uh, so the edges are the warmest and, and the center is slowly heating up uh, and, and coming towards 60 Celsius. Uh, and so it's basically just an inverted plot uh, of the previous simulation that I just ran. So you can tweak around uh, those parameters and, and see what see what happens uh, and sort of study different uh, examples depending on what your initial heat distribution is, what your boundary conditions are, uh, and what your values for K uh, are. And also for, for more advanced examples, you can also uh, change around uh, Q, uh, C, and Rho. Uh, and so you can factor uh, internal heat generation into into the whole equation uh, and see how that affects everything. Uh, but for this uh, particular video, uh, that's that's all I want to cover. It's, uh, it's just an overview of 3D uh, finite difference methods. Uh, so, so that's basically it for this video. Thank you all for watching.